Diphyllobotrium latum. This parasite is also known as broad tapeworm or fish tapeworm and they are also called largest tapeworm of human due to its size. And these parasites uh, can be found in man, dog, cat, pig, polar bear and different other fish eating mammals. This parasite lives in a small intestine of this final host. There are two intermediate hosts. Uh, the first one is copepod crustacean that is cyclops. So maybe you are not uh, aware of what is cyclops. So cyclops is one of the most common genera of freshwater copepods, comprises over 4,000 species. And these individuals may range from 0.5 to 5 millimeters in long. And they are mostly found in fresh water. And these cyclops uh, act as the intermediate host for the completion of life cycle of Diphyllobotrium, Latum, and another parasite that is called Dracunculus medinensis. And the common name of that parasite is called Guinea worm. And the second intermediate host for this particular parasite is Plato's, uh, different freshwater fish. And in this fish, Plerosarcoid will be developed. So this is the picture of prosarcoid. This is very, very tiny structure. Around, you can see the scale bar to understand or to assume what would be their size. And this will be developed in cyclops and another metacystode that is called Plerosarcoid. This is also very tiny structure and this will be developed in the musculature of different freshwater fish. This is the life cycle of different Diphyllobotrium tapeworms. We will consider this life cycle for Diphyllobotrium latum. The parasite is located in the small intestine of different final host and a single parasite can produce 100,000 eggs per day. So that is the adult parasites are highly prolific. So these eggs in the gravid proglodid are passed through the feces. And these eggs are unembryonated. So embryonation will be started uh, by several weeks. And when these eggs will come in contact with the water, the coracidium will be developed. And in the, in the water bodies or in water, they will has to produce this structure that is coracidium and this coracidium will be intact by this frost intermediate host that is cyclops so in the body of the cyclops by two to three weeks a structure will be developed that is called prosarcoid and later on uh, the cyclops will be further uh, ingested by different small fishes in their body another structure will be developed that is called pleurosarcoid so these small fishes act as the second intermediate host and sometimes these small fishes further intact by different big fishes or we can consider this fish as predator fish so in the musculature of these big fishes the same structure will be insisted so the final host that is dog cat, different uh, kinds of bear, man, will be infected after ingesting uh, the musculature of this fish or the small fishes or the offals. So and, uh, this is very important to consider the transmission, how this, uh, the transmission of this parasite can be happened. So man is really, when the man intakes the raw fish, or the less cooked fish or inadequately boiled fish, then the final host that is man can be infected. But the uh, dog or different other uh, cat, they may be infected um, uh, by ingesting the musculature of this fish as well as the offals. And for the minimum time required for the completion of this uh, life cycle is around 
uh, three weeks in dog, but it takes around uh, three to five weeks for the completion of the life cycle of this parasite. So these are the reference books that have that I have used during preparing this uh, presentation. And I have also used a lot of uh, open source information from internet. And finally, as usual, thank you so much for watching this video.